hi guys welcome back to the youtube channel today we'll be learning how to make this two-in-one peplum pinafore top or blouse so let's get started now i will be drafting a rough sketch of a basic bodice pattern on the pattern paper and i will be drawing just two lines or oh, i've drawn already so i have my front and back and blocks already drawn and I have my shoulder and chest line and of course the half lengths. So this is my um, center front and the other side is my center back. So the width of the box is quarter of my ball circumference measurements. Okay, that's the width of the rectangle. Now, um, you're going to be marking half of your across back measurement minus 1.5 inch it's a pinafore top so you subtract 1.5 inch from half of your across back measurement so that's 5.5 for me then um of course my half length is um 17 but i'm marking 15 here okay because i'll still be adding a band so i'm also marking the 5.5 inch on the waistline okay so um this is 5.5 .5 on the shoulder line then my neck width i'm doing 3.5 the neck depth i'm doing um, either 3.5 or 4. you know you're not a fixed value just make sure you use something that is comfortable for you now using my french curve or my curve driller i'm going to be drawing out the neckline okay so this is my neckline here Now, if we were to be um, drafting a normal bodice with normal shoulder measurements, we normally come down from the shoulder line by um, one inch. Okay, so I'm just connecting those two points together like this, the 5.5 .5 inch I marked. Now, I'll say something about coming down from the shoulder slant by, um, by one inch. So I'll just come down by one inch like that. But remember that... And we're creating the shoulder slant to the 5.5 .5 inch mark. I just hope we're not confused yet because it's a pinafore. The shoulder slant will not get to the real across back measurements. I hope that is clear. So this is my shoulder slant for the front. Okay. And then the back. Now for the back, this is my center back. Okay. I'm also going to mark that 5.5 .5 inch from the center back line. Okay, and draw a straight line down. You can't just cut a rope randomly and fix it. It's not sit well on your body. Okay, so this is the line. The 5.5 .5 inch away from the center back too. Now, um, I want to measure what I have here. That's the width of the shoulder slant. It has to correspond with the rope at the back. So this is about 2 inch. Now, um, I'm also going to be marking the same thing on the other side. I also want to create my shoulder slant. Yes, because everything has to match. So you can see the way I'm already measuring. This is two inches. This is two inch. And um, the slant is about half an inch because it didn't get to the real shoulder um, measurement. So I'm slanting it that way. Okay. Then the width of my rope is two inch. I'll be marking that same two inch at the waistline here. The, you know? Yeah, and I'll connect like this. So if you want your rope to be wider than this, then you might have to reduce your neck width. Okay? So this is the rope and this is my center front, the shaded parts. Okay, so this way I'm going to cut out. So this is the front pattern and of course this is the back. I wanted to see um show us how I'm going to cut it out. Okay. I know some of us might want to just cut out a random rope. It doesn't work like that. The rope will not sit well. So this is it. Okay, so as it is, um by the time I flip the rope like this, you can see that it fits perfectly into the shoulder slant. Okay. So I'll be cutting um this unfold. 
and I'll add seam allowance to the neckline, the shoulder slant round half an inch. Same thing for this. I'll add half inch seam allowance round. And I'll be cutting four pieces of this and two of the other one on fold. Now let's cut the um, peplum. Now we have three steps. Okay. So we're going to be cutting um, the first one. All you do is you divide your waist circumference by 6.28. Whatever you get will give you the radius of a full circle. Okay? So, um, when I divide my waist circumference by 6.28, okay, I'll write on the value. I'll fold my fabric or paper into two like this. The first fold and the second fold like I've done. Then, okay, let me just go about this. This is the first and second fold. Now, I will be marking... The length of my radius from the edge of the paper which is about i think 4.5 or so yeah so this is the length of my radius i'm marking it out so i'll just connect them together and then this is my radius we'll be cutting here out then from here i'll mark the length of my peplum so the first step the first layer i want it to be um four inch long but I'll be adding my seam allowance. That'll be 4.5. So I'll just mark 4.5 inch round like so. Then when I transfer it to my fabric, I'll be adding half inch seam allowance to the top part. Or I could just add it while I'm cutting on the ridges now. So this is my peplum. The first layer. Okay. So I'll just cut out the unwanted part, which is the radius first. And the lower part now instead of me to cut on the original line I'll just go up by half an inch so automatically I've added my seam allowance to the peplum or I could just cut it out straight like that and add the seam allowance on the fabric whichever one okay then I'll just cut out the excess at the bottom here so this is the first layer so to cut the second to cut the second layer you just be increasing the length of the peplum and for me I was just adding um, three three inches so the second layer was 7.5 inches the third layer was about nine inches so here this is the first okay this is my first layer you can see here you can see the same amount added to the top part then the second layer is still the same radius it's just longer so um this is it this is the first on the second layer and this is about 8 inches plus seam allowance. By the time I removed one, um, one inch for seam allowance, that will be about 7. And this is the third layer. So you can increase yours, I mean the length, or reduce it. But mine was just increasing by, I think, 3, three inches. Inch. So, I have added crinoline to my peplum to make it wavy. I'll be dropping in the description box the link to the tutorial I did on how to attach crinoline to your peplum i've done a tutorial on that so just check the description box and you see how i fixed the crinoline on the peplum okay now let's go back to um the bodies i've cut out the front unfold and i cut out two pieces then to give my fabric some sort of um stability i added um paper stay Add a paper stay and then this same thing for the stripes. I have four of that, two on each side. One will be serving as lining and the other as um, fabric. So you can see the alignment, like I said. This is how it's going to align on the shoulder. So first thing first, I will be going to turn the stripes half inch on both sides, just at the sides. Okay. I'll turn both of them with half an inch on both sides. Okay. Then I've also turned the neckline of the bodies, fabric and lining together. So these are the two back stripes and um, here the pattern just to confirm. Then what I want to do now, I'm going to be fixing the stripes to the shoulder, but in such a way that we're going to conceal the seams. So now I'll go ahead, flip over the front pattern, front fabric, I mean to say. 
I'll stitch it down with half an inch on both sides. Okay, so once I do that, I'm gonna have something like this. Then I will fix my stripe in like this from the right side. I'm doing this so that we're gonna conceal the seam. Okay, then um, this is the second one too. I've fixed it in from here. Then I'll just stitch down with half an inch on both sides here and here too after doing that you're going to have something like this so you can see that the seam is clean no rough edges you know then we're going to be cutting out um, a band now the band is going to be your waist circumference okay plus some extra inches that you'll be using to tie like a bow on the peplum so this band is on fold now half of my with circumference is 14 then i added about i think extra 12 inches extra on both sides so and i also added interfacing on the parts that will go around my waist aside the um rope yeah now i would be attaching my peplum to one end of the band in between the fabric and the lining meanwhile i use the same fabric as the lining okay so you just notch the midpoint of the peplum and the midpoint of the band so the peplum is going to be in between the fabric and lining of the band i hope that's making sense like so you pin it together and then you go ahead and sew it round i'm doing all of this so that uh, the sewing will be very neat, you know. Despite the fact that it doesn't have lining, but it still looks neat. The peplum, especially. So now, um, the other end of the band, you take it to the pressing iron and fold in the half inch seam allowance, okay. And then you fix in um, the front in between the seam allowance. I forgot to mention the width of my band is two inches. <laughs> yeah. Then I added extra one inch. That's half half inch for joining of the band to the bodies and the peplum. Yeah. So the width of my band or the height of my band is two inches. Okay. So after joining, yeah, this is how I'm gonna be joining it. Make sure you iron the seam allowance so that you don't have any pleats or folds or any irregular, you know, folds. So you just pin it down. Make sure you use your pins. You pin it down like that. Though it might be a bit tricky because of the peplum. I'm oh, sorry, the crinoline. It might be wavy here and there, so no, no problem. Now for the positioning of the back rope, you place the back pattern on the front like this. Okay, this is the center front, which is also doubling as the center back. Now the distance from the center front to where the rope is about 3.5 inch so what you do now is towards the end of the peplum here here you measure 3.5 inch away from the center back you can't just position the rope anywhere you want to okay you measure 3.5 inch away from the center back then um, the rope can come in in between the seam allowance of the band then you go ahead and sew around and do the same thing for the other side. Okay, okay. So this is how it's going to look. I'll place it on the mannequin now for us to have a better view. Yeah, so this is a two-in-one peplum pinna for top. Looking all lovely and nice. I hope you love the tutorial. Please give this video a thumbs up. Leave your comments and your reactions. Do not forget to share with your family and friends. And very, very importantly, do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching. When I can hold you tight, I'll see the star come light. The star come light, the star come light.